Good evening. Uh, this 69th meeting of the 72nd term of the Baltimore City Council is now called to order. Please turn off all cell phones or put them on vibrate. Tonight's invocation will be done by Reverend Scott Bellows from St. David's Episcopal Church. And following that, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for all the blessings which you bestow upon your children in all times and in all places. As our council convenes this evening to do the work we have entrusted to their hands, we pray that their hearts and minds will be open and responsive to the needs of all the people of our city and your will for us. Tonight we especially remember the good and faithful examples of two of our native sons who having finished their work on earth have returned to you the God that created them and now welcome them home. We give heartfelt thanks for the lives of the Honorable Congressman Elijah E. Cummings and the Honorable Thomas L.J. D'Alessandro III, former mayor. And we pray that your comfort and peace may surround their families in the days ahead. May the legacy of civic pride and leadership embodied by these two distinguished public servants be continued and enlarged by those who follow in their footsteps. Heavenly Father, you have given us a vision of that holy city to which the nations of the world bring their glory. Behold and visit, we pray, the cities of the earth and especially our city. Renew the ties of mutual regard which form our civic life. Inspire and enliven honest and able leaders. Enable us to eliminate poverty, prejudice, and oppression, that peace may prevail with righteousness and justice with order, and that women and men from different cultures and with differing talents may find with one another the fulfillment of their humanity. Finally, O oh God, send down upon those who hold office in this city and especially in this council the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well-being of all people, all of which we ask in the name of the one God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Tonight's showcase Baltimore presenter is Jermaine Thunder Robinson, upcut, Uppercut Boxing Gym. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jermaine Thunder Robinson. I am the first black woman-owned boxing gym in Maryland. And keep in mind, I said the first, but I won't be the last. My um, location is at 4408 Park Heights Avenue. Now, the reason why I chose that area is because it was an area that was greatly needed for kids to have a safe haven to go to and also to, to release a lot of negative energy. I've been in the Park Heights area for now six years. Now, the way that I go about training, um, my, using my boxer, I, I teach in a holistic way. We consider my gym more like a mind pa shop. Myself and my, um, my head coach, which is Leona Truth Wallace, we represent family when you walk in the door. And I have to say that all of my coaches that are in my, in my gym are trained under USA Olympic Boxing. We all have to go through a safety course. So we all are very much aware of how to take care of the environment, the kids, and everyone that come into our building. Our um, first, we, we work with kids, we work with adults. We start at the age of eight on up. With our adults that are trying to get in shape, lose weight, or maintain, or just start to get fit again. 
these are the type of adults that we work with, whether you have a physical disability or a mental disability. If you have a physical limitation, we find different programs to work with you to try to engage you in getting fit, whether you're in a wheelchair, use a wheel walker, or whatever it is that your, um, your temporary disability may be. We try to work with you to um, help you perform at your best ability. We also work with adults that have Parkinson's disease. As we know that Parkinson's disease is a, it's a nervous, it messes with your nervous system. And boxing has been proven scientifically that it will help you maintain a center and bring you into focus instead of um, being limited with your muscle movement. It kind of helps you and guides you and strengthen your muscles, your muscles. We work with youth. We work with them on counseling. We work with them on mentoring. We also work with um, trying to help them find jobs, trying to have um, pro work with them with their GED. And we also try to further their careers and helping them figure it out what it is that they do want. Now, I, I do want to say that we also work with kids. We have been working with kids a lot dealing with bullying. And dealing with bullying, we try to inform the, the child that comes in that it's not them. That's the first thing. Because bullying takes place with the person that's doing the bullying. And the ones that are around them that are viewing this, seeing this, recording this, and let it take place. So my approach is try to not only talk to and work with the, the person that has been bullied, but the bullier itself. We also work with kids that have um, autism. Um, with the kids with autism, a lot of times the noise and um, different people moving and coming in and out of their environment. Um, I have had great success. Um, I almost want to pat myself on the back for that because we just had a young man that have come from having to have his coat on when he come into the gym to have to have a pencil in his hand and had to have a straw in his hand. Now he comes in, he takes his coat off, he goes to the dressing room, he puts on his clothes, he accepts the noise, he accepts the different people that come in there, and by surprise, he asks me, he said he wants to box. I said, you want to box? He said, yes, Mama Thunder. I said, you want to box who? He said, a boy like him. For me, that was a big step. You know, so we work with everyone. Our, our goal is that with boxing, change his life and fit to change you. It's the holistic approach that gets you off your feet and gets you moving. And also, I would like to add uh, just, this, just this little note that um, we are a nonprofit gym. I have not been supported so much by anyone, but there has been one group of family that has always been supportive of me. And even her, her workers, everybody, they track me down. They make sure that I get out and get the word out. I have to give it up to Ms. Sharon Milton, please. I say thank you. Because she's been the only one that has been following me, supporting me along this way. No matter who I talk to, they may um, say what they're going to do, but she follows through and also her, uh, her staff follows through. I have to say thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Tonight's Youth Showcase presenter is the White Knights Track and Field Club. Good evening. Um, thank you for having us to the city council. Um, I want to thank my organization and my board members for allowing me to speak on our behalf. Um, we are the Baltimore City White Knight Track Club. Uh, we operate uh, mainly in East Baltimore, but we have kids from as far as um, Irvington. Um, we had 101 kids participate in the program in 2018 and 2019 between our three athletic seasons, our summer camp, and our program will assist our young women transitioning from middle school into high school. Um, we started this program in 2014. Um, we have 16 kids strong. Um, so to grow that quickly in this area, uh, to have 101 kids is a blessing. Um, it is truly, truly um, 
I'm truly thankful for uh, being, uh, being able to come out here and really just discuss what we're doing for our youth and why we do it. Um, the backbone of the program was always to support social, emotional, academic, and then athletics uh, support for our, uh, our youth. Um, so we do that in different means and different capacities of our summer camps, even providing them with uh, long-term planning, um, with our social constructs of, of family orientation. Um, so I'm not going to talk your heads off about our program. I brought some youth here to really speak with you guys about uh, how the program has affected their lives. Um, I know that we uh, have a great system in place to really assist in the development of our young people. Um, so um, without further ado, um, the White Knights, we were established based on Baltimore City College Preparatory High School. Uh, that is my, um, my school that I graduated from. So the Knights came from wanting to be a hero, wanting to come in and provide services and be that saving beacon for as many kids in our city as possible. So I'm going to let them tell a little bit of their stories and I'm going to get off the mic. My name is Nala Moore Valentine and I'm an All-American and what school I go to is Hamilton Elementary Middle School and the events I do is the relays, long jump, and the javelin, and well, what I love about the White Knights is that we work hard. <laughs> I attend Baltimore Polytechnic Institute. I'm a 10th grader currently, and I currently have a 4.3 weighted GPA. Right. <laughs> uh, my greatest track accomplishments are placing six nationally in the 400 2018. I set the 400 meter indoor record in AAU, and I placed first in the four x four in the Maryland State Championships. My favorite thing about the White Knights is we're not just a team, we're definitely a family, and that's why I love it. And they definitely train you mentally, also athletically, which is something I would definitely need in high school and college and further on down the road. And my greatest aspiration is to attend the 2024 Olympics, and I know the White Knights will get me there. Good evening. Um, I'll actually be reading on behalf of my daughter. Her, daughter, her name is Akata Wise. She attends Episcopal High School, boarding school in Alexandria, Virginia, as a freshman. Um, she wrote an excerpt, and I'll be reading on her behalf. Her current GPA at the end of middle school was 3.5. Her track accomplishments. My accomplishments in track have been trying to get better as an athlete, so I can run better times. Also, I'm proud of myself for studying and learning some new things about track. From the last season, I am most proud of learning and becoming All-American in the triple jump. My best triple jump for the year was 35, five and a quarter feet, and she placed ninth in the country at the Junior Olympics. Uh, impact the program has had in the area of her life. The biggest impact the White Knight Track Club has had on my life is from the coaches. My coaches are the absolute best. They are always there for us if it's about track or not. When it comes to track, my coaches have plenty of experience, so I trust they know what they're doing. Outside of track, they have experienced most of the things a student athlete experiences because they were once currently where we are. If I ever have a problem about anything, I know I can do, go to one of my coaches to talk to them about it. Her future goals. In the future, I hope to grow as a student athlete, make my times better, and do better at staying fit. But most importantly, I want to make my mother, I didn't say that, she said that. <laughs> I want to make my mother and my coaches proud because they are the ones helping me and pushing me through this journey. Thank you. Hello. My name is Ramon Valentine. I'm the coach's son. <laughs> 
Um, I go to Hamilton Elementary Middle School. <laughs> um, my GPA is a 3.5 currently. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm sorry. The um, importance. Um, one thing I will say about the White Knights are that the high schools I'm trying to go to, my dad knows um, the coaches, <laughs> so basically. Um, the high schools I'm trying to go to are Curly, um, City, Polly, Gilman, and Calvert Hall. Yeah, that's it. Sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's it. I'm sorry. That's it. Um, hello. My name is Kendall Fortune. Uh, I currently attend Baltimore City College High School. Um, throughout middle school, I've had a GPA of 3.5 or higher. Um, I've been running track for six years now. And my favorite part of being a part of Baltimore City White Knights Track Club is it's a family. And it's like they're, the coaches and parents and everybody are there for you, even if it doesn't deal with track, just track, or if you like need help with stuff outside of school or like emotional support and everything. Um, my events are a little bit of everything. I do hurdles, shot put, long jump, high jump, shot put, and I used to do the 1500, and that's it. All right, so thank you. Um, we will continue to, to fight um, to provide our, our student athletes with the support they need to go to some of the best institutions um, I try to bring somebody from each level to kind of see how we cultivate. We operate from ages five to 18. Um, and we've been tremendously successful with an overall team GPA of 3.1. We haven't had any kids fail any grades. We haven't had any kids get arrested. We haven't had any kids um, fall victim to the streets. They just, they just don't have to, uh, the time to. Um, <laughs> so um, thank you. We're at whitenighttrack.com. If you ever want to support, we definitely appreciate it. And you guys have a good evening. Thank you, thank you, Coach Valentine. And for the record, he may have been a City College graduate, but he practiced at Mergo for track and field. <laughs> roll call. The, cl the clerk will now call the roll of the members. President Scott, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Henry, Pinkett, Schleifer, Middleton, Costello, Stokes, Sneed, Clark, Bullock, uh, Burnett, Reisinger. Mr. Cur Mr. President, we have a quorum. We will now proceed with the adoption of the journal. Mr. President, the journal of the October 7th, 2019 proceedings are on the council members' desks. Without objection, the journal will be adopted. The journal is adopted. Bill signed by the mayor. There are no bills signed by the mayor this week. Executive nominations. EA 19-0255, Mia J. Bloom, member, Sustainability Commission, District 3. This has been assigned to the Executive Appointments Committee. EA 19-0256, Nicolette A. Lusant, PhD, Member, Sustainability Committee, this Commission, has been District 12. This has been assigned to the Executive Appointments Committee. Bills to be introduced. City Council Bill 19-0458, Franchise, Light Pole Base Within the Right-of-Way of Quad Avenue at Interstate 95, 
for the purpose of granting a franchise to the state of Maryland for the, for the use of the Maryland Transportation Authority to construct and maintain a private light pole base within the right of way of Quad Avenue subject to certain terms, conditions, and reservations and providing for a special effective date. Sponsor, City Council President on behalf of the administration. This has been assigned to the Housing and Urban Affairs Committee. City Council Bill 19-0459, City Property, naming the Courthouse East Building to be the Elijah E. Cummings Courthouse for the purpose of naming the Courthouse East Building located at 111 North Calvert Street, the Elijah E. Cummings Courthouse. Sponsor, City Council President on behalf of the administration. This has been assigned to the Judiciary Committee. City Council Bill 19-0460, subsequent change and conditional use clarification. For the purpose of clarifying that any subsequent change in a conditional use is subject to the existing procedures set forth in Title IV, Subtitle, Subtitle V, Subtitle IV of the Zoning Code of Baltimore City. Sponsors, Clark, Henry, Sneed, Middleton, Reisinger. A chair recognizes Councilwoman Clark. Thank you, Mr. President. Ms. Madam, Councilwoman, wait for one second. We have to get you a microphone. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. Um, this is a zoning code um, proposal that says, let's make it clear, when you go to the zoning board and they give you a conditional use that you want for your property, maybe it's a convenience store um, and you needed that conditional use from them. If you decide you, two years later you want a barber shop, another conditional use, you got to come back and start all over to apply for it, advertise, let the neighbors know, and post your property in order to get another conditional use. It just clears things up a little bit. Thank you. I hope you'll all help support this legislation. Thank you. Uh, this has been assigned to the Land Use Committee. City Council Bill 19-0461, Zoning Use Regulation, Residential Care Facilities, for the purpose of clarifying the requirements for a residential care facility where single family dwellings are permitted, clarifying the duties of the zoning administrator, requiring the residential care facilities require conditional use approval of the Board of Municipal and Zoning Appeals in certain residential zoning districts and conforming reg related provisions. Sponsors, Burnett, Bullock, Henry, Pinkett, Dorsey, Middleton, Clark, Reisinger. Chair recognizes Councilman Burnett. Thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. Uh, so this bill is pretty straightforward. Whenever there is a residential care facility uh, located in a neighborhood, uh, oftentimes uh, we, we hear back from people, uh, our constituents around the, the density of these facilities and in, in, to particular neighborhoods. I know for sure this is a challenge in, in Northwest Baltimore, but I know it's a challenge throughout the city where there are high concentrations of, of facilities, whether they be uh, uh, residential treatment facilities, whether they be uh, group homes or any other sort of uh, live-in care space, uh, the residents are often piled into the same neighborhood or the same block. It, it has a, a harmful impact on both those, con those residents because they don't have the ability to live anywhere across the city when there's concentrations of these in, in, in pockets of Northwest Baltimore and throughout the city. Uh, and, and importantly, it also impacts the neighborhood itself when we talk about uh, homes that could be otherwise for sale for families. Um, there's just a, a lack of equitable distribution of these uh, types of facilities, and so this creates a distance requirement between them uh, as to make sure that, you know, like they are doing in our neighboring county, Baltimore County and Prince George's County, that there's an equitable distribution of these permits uh, across the city of Baltimore. So I look forward to spirited debate and committee uh, and discussion this further with my colleagues. So thank you to all the co-sponsors, and uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Any more co-sponsors? Uh, this has been assigned to the Land Use Committee. City Council Bill 19-0462, Zoning, Conditional Use Conversion of a Single Family Dwelling Unit to Three Dwelling Units in the R8 Zoning District, Variance, 2112 St. Paul Street. For the purpose of permitting, subject to certain conditions, the conversion of a single family dwelling unit to three dwelling units in the R8 Zoning District on the property known as 2112 St. Paul Street as outlined in red on the accompanying plaque and granting a variance from certain off-street parking requirements. Sponsor, Stokes. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Land Use Committee. 
City Council Bill 19-0463, rezoning Block 7762, Lots 001-007, for the purpose of changing the zoning for the properties known as Block 7762, Lots 001-007, as outlined in the red and red on the accompanying plat from the R3 Zoning District to the R6 Zoning District. Sponsor, Reisinger. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Land Use Committee. City Council Bill 19-0464, rezoning a portion of 619 North Milton Avenue, AKA 617 North Milton Avenue. For the purpose of changing the zoning for a portion of the property known as 619 North Milton Avenue, AKA 617 North Milton Avenue, as outlined in red on the accompanying plat from the, six, from the C1 zoning district to the C, C3 zoning district. Sponsor, Sneed. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Land Use Committee. Resolutions to be introduced. City Council Resolution 19-0173-R, approval for the exchange of a Class BD7 license for use at 604 South Exeter Street to a Class A7 license for use at 711 South Central Avenue. For the purpose of providing the required approval under Maryland Code Annotated Alcohol and Beverage Section 12-902 0.1 C1 to allow the license holder holding a valid class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license issued for use at 604 South Exeter Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21202, to apply to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City to exchange their class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license for a class A7 beer, wine, and liquor license for use at 711 South Central Avenue. Sponsor, Cohen. Chair recognizes Councilman Cohen. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is a business that is moving. Uh, it's a, the previous liquor license will need to be transferred. Uh, they're moving right down the block. Uh, it's a really good store if anyone's ever been there. Uh, it's been 509 and uh, serves the community well. Never had any complaints. They are a strong local business. Uh, and so that's why we are introducing this amendment or this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Housing and Urban Affairs Committee. City Council Resolution 19-0174R, informational hearing, Anchor Institution's pilot agreement for real property taxes for the purpose of requesting a briefing on the efficacy of the 2016 pilot agreement and options for reopening and renegotiating the agreement. Sponsors, Costello, Burnett, Dorsey, Schleifer, Pinkett, Henry, Middleton, Reisinger. Please add Councilman Cohen as a co-sponsor, Council President Scott as a co-sponsor. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this resolution is intended to take a look at the uh, MOU for the pilot agreement from 2016 with our anchor institutions. There are 15 institutions which are a party to this agreement. Uh, it provides for those institutions collectively paying $6 million per year in real property taxes over a 10-year period set to expire in uh, 2026. Uh, this deal was just renegotiated uh, three years ago from the previous 2011 uh, agreement. All in all, those institutions, it is estimated that they have assessed real property values of approximately $5.3 billion, uh, which would result in approximately $120 million in real property taxes. My hope is that we can have a honest uh, and responsible and comprehensive discussion around the efficacy of that agreement and if that's working for Baltimore City, especially in light of the fact that we have significant upcoming um, requirements that are gonna be placed on us by the state to comply with the Kerwin Commission for school funding. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. This has been assigned to the Committee of the Whole. City Council Resolution 19-0175R, Request for State Action, Real Property Tax Credit for Grocery Stores and Food Desert Retail Incentive Areas for the purpose of calling on the Maryland General Assembly to enact and the governor to sign legislation amending state law to authorize a real property tax credit for existing and potential grocery stores inside Food Desert Retail Incentive Areas. Sponsors, Henry, President Scott, Bullock, Burnett, Sneed, Dorsey, Schleifer, Pinkett, Middleton, Clark, Reisinger. Please add Councilman Stokes as a co-sponsor, Councilman McCray, Councilman oh. Cohen as a co-sponsor. Chair recognizes Councilman Henry. Thank you, Mr. Oh, wow. Thank you, Mr. President. Hmm. Okay, it's going to take a little while to get used to this one. 
Okay. Uh, a couple years ago, my district lost one of its grocery stores. Uh, there had been a Mars at the corner of Lock Raven and Northern Parkway. And after the Mars left, the owners of the shopping center put some real effort into trying to recruit another grocery store chain to come in there. And uh, we worked hard with several chains. Uh, the BDC worked with us trying to come up with the right package of incentives to bring them in. And what had become clear was we were dealing with the fact that we were just a couple blocks from the city county line. And just a few blocks north, property taxes were half of what they are in Baltimore City. And that is one of the things that we struggle with when we are trying to both attract grocery stores to food deserts here in Baltimore, but also when we are trying to keep the grocery stores that we have that are struggling on very thin margins, one of the things that they will tell us is that um, the property tax, the real property tax burden is strong. And I stress real because a couple of years ago, we instituted a personal property tax credit in an effort to help grocery stores. But it, the way it is designed, it is better at helping people who are moving in and starting a new one than it is at helping the grocery stores that are already here. And if we want to help them and keep them uh, steady and sustainable, uh, a real property tax credit would be the way to go. We don't have the authority to do that right now. This resolution, and I thank my co-sponsors for it, uh, will go to support the General Assembly giving us that authority. And hopefully, we will, re we will pick up this issue again in the spring after the General Assembly session and discuss moving forward with this credit. Uh, I'd like to move the, I'm sorry, I'd like to motion to suspend the rules to permit immediate adoption. Roll call. President Scott. Yes. Councilman Cohen. Yes. Councilwoman McCrae. Yes. Councilman Dorsey. Yes. Councilman Henry. Yes. Councilman Schleifer. Yes. Councilwoman Middleton. Yes. Councilman Pinkett. Yes. Councilman Burnett. Yes. Councilman Bullock. Yes. Councilman Reisinger. Yes. Councilman Costello. Yes. Councilman Stokes. Yes. Councilwoman Sneed. Yes. Councilwoman Clark. Yes. The motion is approved. This resolution has been adopted. Thank you. City Council Resolution 19-0176R, recognizing October as Anti-Bullying Month. For the purpose of recognizing October as Anti-Bullying Month and calling on all schools and organizations dealing with youth in Baltimore to do their part to bring awareness to the bullying crisis and work to end bullying. Sponsors, Schleifer, President Scott, Bullock, Burnett, Sneed, Dorsey, Pinkett, Middleton, Clark, Reisinger, Henry Costello, Stokes. Please add Councilwoman McCray, Councilman Cohen as co-sponsors. Chair recognizes Councilman Schleifer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is uh, the third year in a row that this, uh, uh, this council is uh, recognizing this month as Anti-Bullying Month as it's recognized across the country. Uh, we know that over 50% of of students uh, throughout grade school are bullied at one point or another, affected by bullying, and so it's important to bring awareness to this, and we've uh, done certain outreach and, and other things inside the schools and other groups and encouraged others, and so I want to thank people like uh, Ms. Robinson from Uppercut uh, Boxing who just spoke about how, you know, what they're doing uh, to end bullying, and so I thank her for that and thank all those uh, who are doing the work in the community to help ending this epidemic. Thank you. And I'd like to move for um, immediate adoption. Roll call. President Scott. Yes. Councilman Cohen. Yes. Councilwoman McCrae. Yes. Councilman Dorsey. Yes. Councilman Henry. Yes. Councilman Schleifer. Yes. Vice President Middleton. Yes. Councilman Pinkett. Yes. Councilman Burnett. Yes. Councilman Bullock. Yes. Councilman Reisinger. Yes. Councilman Costello. Yes. Councilman Sneed. Yes. Yes. Councilman Stokes. Councilwoman Sneed. Yes. Councilwoman Clark. Yes. The motion is approved. This resolution has been adopted. City Council Resolution 19-0177R, honoring former Mayor Thomas J. D'Alessandro III. For the purpose of paying tribute to the life of Mayor Thomas J. D'Alessandro III and expressing appreciation for the many contributions he made to, the city, to Baltimore City and for his many years of extraordinary service to the citizens of Baltimore. Sponsors, President Scott, Middleton, Bur Bullock, Burnett, Sneed, 
Dorsey, Schleifer, Costello, Pinkett, Clark, Reisinger, Stokes, Henry. Please add Councilwoman McCray and Councilman Cohen as co-sponsors. Um, Mayor DeLisandro cared deeply about this city and was an unrelenting advocate for all citizens of Baltimore. Uh, young Tommy, as he was affectionately called, understood the need to bridge the gap between communities and worked to eliminate racial barriers within our city. Through many of our own initiatives and legislation, that example lives on today in our own city council. Our thoughts and prayers are with uh, Mayor D'Alessandro's family, Speaker Pelosi, and all who knew and loved him. Uh, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Clark. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. Uh, I'd like to move uh, the adopt the um, the suspension of the rules and immediate adoption. And if I may, I'd like to say a word or two yes, about young Tommy. And he will always be young Tommy, because like this very young council and, and so many new members that are on it is the most progressive I have ever served with. Young Tommy D'Alessandro, as the mayor, came in not before his time. He made the time when things began to change for equity and um, inclusion in Baltimore City across the city. I remember as a young mother going to council meetings where Tommy, young Tommy had appointed a whole new bunch of council members who were progressive, African Americans, and all kinds of people whose children actually attended the schools. And we would watch as the, the changes came rolling through. You wouldn't miss a council meeting because they were all important and about things that were changing for the better for our children. So, Mr. President, members of the council, I need a second. No, roll call. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. President. Roll call. Sorry, everybody. Thanks for the offer. <laughs> President Scott, yes. Councilman Cohen, <laughs> Councilwoman McCrae, yeah. Councilman Dorsey, yeah. Councilman Henry, yeah. Councilman Schleifer, yeah. Vice President Middleton, yeah. Councilman Pinkett, yeah. Councilman Burnett, yeah. Councilman Bullock, yeah. Councilman Reisinger, yeah. Councilman Costello, yeah. Councilman Stokes, yeah. Councilwoman Sneed, yeah. Councilwoman Clark. Yeah. Thank you. This motion is approved. This resolution has been adopted. City Council Resolution 19-0178R, honoring United States Representative Elijah Cummings for the purpose of paying tribute to the life of Congressman Elijah Cummings and expressing appreciation for the many contributions he made to Baltimore City and for his many years of exemplary service to the citizens of Baltimore. Sponsors, President Scott, Middleton, Bullock, Burnett, Dorsey, Schleifer, Costello, Pinkett, Clark, Reisinger, Stokes, Henry. Please add Councilwoman McCray and Councilman Cohen as co-sponsors. Um, I think everyone knows that I'm heartbroken by the loss of, of Congressman Cummings. Uh, Congressman Cummings was Baltimore's congressman, but was also a, an American hero and a personal mentor and free friend to me. I've recounted many times over the past week about how I appreciate that mentorship and that love and that guidance that he provided for me, not just about being a better public servant, but a better man. We know that this world, this city, our state, and the country is a better place because he was in it. And I think uh, all of us have heard one of those speeches, if probably thousands of them at this point, and understand his deep passion for Baltimore City and what he believed and what the promise of a better Baltimore. So. Uh, for, thank you for all of us, all of us who joined the family at the funeral on, on last Friday. And just remember that uh, now it's up to us. We have to finish the work. As I said to a member of the media early today, we now have to stand on those big, broad, world-bearing weight shoulders and take us to a higher height. And just remember that he always said uh, that our children are the uh, living messages we send in the future we will never see. And we have to be those messages. And I often, as like I said last week, I hope that when he saw me, he saw the future and that he saw that the future was to be a better place because of the light that he instilled in me. And we all have to continue to push that work because it is a big, big hole to fill, but he would not have left us if he didn't think we were up to filling that hole. So thank you, and, and we have to honor to support the Congressman. Uh, Councilwoman Sneed. Oh, uh, Councilwoman, as Councilwoman Sneed, as a co-sponsor, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Clark. Mr. President, members of the Council, it's my honor to um, move the immediate adoption of this resolution. And I can't think of any 
better way to move this resolution, and I won't be looking for a second because I know all of Baltimore seconds the motion. Um, it's just a single minute, but eternity is in it. So was the life of the great, wonderful neighbor, friend, mentor, congressman, chairman, hero of our city, Elijah Cummings. Ro so moved. Roll call. President Scott. Yes. Councilman Cohen. Yes. Councilwoman McCrae. Yes. Councilman Dorsey. Yes. Councilman Henry. Yes. Councilman Schleifer. Yes. Vice President Middleton. Yes. Councilman Pinkett. Yes. Councilman Burnett. Yes. Councilman Bullock. Yes. Councilman Reisinger. Yes. Councilman Costello. Yes. Councilman Stokes. Yes. Councilwoman Sneed. Yes. Councilwoman Clark. Yes. Thank you. The motion is approved. This resolution has been adopted. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Mr. President, I move that we read short titles for second and third reader for the duration of the hearing. Without, without objection, short titles will be read for the remainder of the meeting. Short titles will be read for the remainder of the meeting. Consent calendar. You can find the consent calendar in section A at the back of the agenda. Without objection, the consent calendar will be approved. The consent calendar is approved. Committee reports. We will now move to bills on second reader. Budget and Appropriations Committee. City Council Resolution 19-0163-R, informational hearing, closed means closed, clarifying 311 services approach to resolving requests. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. We held a hearing on uh, this resolution last week, very informative hearing. We had a number of different city agencies in there, uh, and I believe my colleague, Councilman Pinkett, is, is likely going to be following up on, on the, what we heard during the hearing. Thank you. Oh, and I move the resolution favorably. All those in favor of approving this resolution say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This resolution is adopted. Housing and Urban Affairs Committee. City Council Bill 19-0406, Franchise Cellco Partnerships, doing business as Verizon Wireless. Chair recognizes Councilman Bullock. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the committee uh, met on October 22nd, 2019 to consider two bills. We'll be moving um, them both favorably with amendments. Uh, there are technical amendments on your desk, and I move the amendments. All those in favor of approving the amendments say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The amendments are approved. Chair recognizes Councilman Bullock. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill favorably as amended. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. City Council Bill 19-0407, Franchise New Singular Wireless PCS. Chair recognizes Councilman Bullock. Thank you, Mr. President. As previously stated, there are technical <laughs> amendments on your desk. I move the amendments. All those in favor of approving the amendments say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The amendments are approved. Chair recognizes Councilman Bullock. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill favorably as amended. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. Judiciary Committee. City Council Resolution 17-0014R, Stormwater Remediation Fee Oversight Committee. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the committee held a hearing on this resolution. Uh, this was a resolution that was introduced uh, in mid-2017. Uh, the committee, uh, which was ad hoc, which I chaired, uh, we spent about two and a half years working on this, working with DPW. Uh, there was a final report that was disseminated to council members uh, about a week or two ago. I appreciate all of our colleagues who showed up to learn about this important issue. Uh, and at this time, I move the resolution favorably. All those in favor of approving this resolution say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This resolution is approved. Land Use Committee. City Council Bill 19-0413, Planned Unit Development, Amendment 2, Whitehall Cotton Mill. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Mr. President, uh, the committee had a hearing on this bill. There are amendments on my colleague's table. Uh, I move the amendments. All those in favor of approving the amendments say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The amendments are approved. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Mr. President, I move the bill favorable as amended. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. City Council Bill 19-0430, repeal of Ordinance 16-0580, Northwood Commons Planned Unit Development. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Mr. President, I move the bill favorable. 
All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. City Council Bill 18-0307, Water Accountability and Equity Act. Thank you. Uh, Madam Vice President, before, before I recognize you, I just want to say that I'm proud that the Water Accountability and Equity Act is back before the full council. I want to give a big, big thanks to Council Vice President Middleton for shepherding this bill through the committee process. We know it's a very tough process and there were lots of issues. And we also know that every council member has experienced the breakdown of our water billing system. We see it through our constituents' communication every day, be it from missing bills, erroneous bills, or balances, frustrating disputes process that can go on for years. This piece of legislation is about structural change, focus on accountability and transparency within the Department of Public Works. Just the news from last week about the Ritz-Carlton condominiums that had not been billed for water since 2007 to the missing DPW audit that led to many deferral on the water bill contract before uh, the Board of Estimates last week make an even stronger case for this piece of legislation. This bill creates an independent and transparent dispute resolution process for inaccurate bills, one that renters can access to, not just homeowners. It also ensures water is affordable for our most vulnerable neighbors by establishing income-based discounts. DPW must be accountable to its customers, Baltimore residents. I want to thank the advocates who have worked with tirelessly on this piece of legislation, many of whom join us tonight, and all of the constituents who have shared their experience with DPW with all of our office throughout the years. Thank you. Chair recognizes Council Vice President Middleton. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to start by thanking Council President Brandon Scott for your leadership on this issue and the support that Michael Huber and Kimberly Rubens from your staff provided throughout this process. Um, I'd like to also thank all of the members of the water advocacy groups, which I'm sure a number of them are behind us. Go. If we could take a moment, if we, there we go. You, you can stand, and I'd like to thank you for being steadfast and persistent in bringing attention to such a critical topic that affects so many residents of Baltimore City, so thank you. And last but not least, I'd like to also thank Samuel Johnson, staff to the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee for all of the work that you did to ensure that the committee and myself were prepared for each hearing. And in the beginning of every hearing we held on this legislation, I uh, stated a simple quote, to deny citizens accountability to affordable water is to deny them access to the most basic human right. Uh, tonight, after months of hearings, work sessions, and testimony, we present to the full council legislation that will make water services affordable for all citizens of Baltimore. And on that note, this bill came out of committee on September 26, 2019. Uh, the sponsor was former City Council President Bernard C. Jack Young. The committee approved the bill as favorable with amendments. The amendments are on council members' desks. I move the committee amendments. All those in favor of approving the amendments say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The amendments are approved. Ch chair recognizes Council Vice President Middleton. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill favorable as amended. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This bill moves to third reader. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Chair recognizes Councilman Dorsey. Oh, all sorry. the amendments. It was all the amendments. She said she did. She said all the amendments. She didn't say committee amendments. Thank you. City Council Bill 19-0150 R. Investigative hearing. Entities receiving city funds. Are they holding up their end of the bargain? Chair recognizes Council Vice President Middleton. Thank you, Mr. President. The bill came out of committee on October 10th, 2019. 
Sponsor, uh, Councilman Eric Costello. The committee moved the bill with a favorable report. I move the bill as favorable. All those in favor of approving this resolution say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The motion is approved. This resolution is approved. City Council Bill 19-0456, High Performance Newly Constructed Dwellings, Clarification. Chair recognizes Council Vice President Middleton. Uh, this bill came out of committee on October 10th as well, 2019. Sponsor Councilman Leon Pinkett. The committee moved the bill with a favorable report. I move the bill as favorable. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. All opposed say nay. The motion to approve this bill moves to third reader. Thank you. Third reader for final passage. City Council Bill 19-0351, rezoning 3515 East Lombard Street. President Scott, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Middleton, Pinkett, Burnett, Bullock, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Sneed, Clark. This bill is approved. City Council Bill 19-0360, zoning conditional use conversion of a single family dwelling unit to two dwelling units in the R7 zoning district, variance 1214 Bolton Street. President Scott, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Middleton, Pinkett, Burnett, Bullock, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Sneed, Clark. This bill is approved. City Council Bill 19-0392, zoning conditional use conversion of a single family dwelling unit to two dwelling units in the R8 zoning district, variance 2132 West Baltimore Street. President Scott, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Middleton, Pinkett, Burnett, Bullock, Reisinger, Costello, Stokes, Sneed, Clark. This bill is approved. City Council Bill 19-0409, Transparency and Oversight and Claims and Litigation. President Scott, Cohen, McCray, Dorsey, Henry, Schleifer, Middleton, Pinkett, Burnett, Bullock, Roger, Costello, Stokes, Sneed, Clark. This bill is approved. Committee announcements. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. Budget and Appropriations Committee will hold a hearing on Tuesday, November 26th at 5 p.m hopefully in council chambers and not here. Uh, that hearing will be televised on Charm TV. This is Legislative Oversight 19-0060, uh, budget oversight hearing for Baltimore City Police Department. My colleague, Councilman Schleifer, will be uh, announcing the uh, uh, sister bill to that. In addition, Judiciary Committee will hold a hearing on Tuesday, November 5th at 10.01 a.m. when Council Bill 19-0378 Ethics Board, Administration, and Staff at the request of Councilman Dorsey. Judiciary Committee will hold a hearing on Tuesday, November 26th at 10 a.m. on Council Bill 19-0457, Elected Officials, Financial Disclosure at the request of Councilman Dorsey. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilman Stokes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. The Executive Appointments Committee will hold a hearing on Wednesday, November the 6th at 10 a.m to review the following nominations for the Mayor's Anti-Animal Abuse Advisory Commission. Um, Emily Ho Hoover Mayo, Darcy F Phelan, Emrick, Lisa Radoff, also on the same day, they we have a hearing on the Commission on Sustain Sustainability for um, Delegate Regina T. Boyce. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chair recognizes Councilman Scheifler. Thank you, Mr. President. The Public Safety Committee will hold our monthly oversight hearing on November 26th in Council Chambers at 5.01 p.m. and this will be televised on Charm TV. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman from Southwest Baltimore had to wait as Southwestern was defeated by Mervo 63 to nothing on Friday. Chair recognizes Councilman Burnett. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Pre President Petty, uh, the uh, <laughs> Health Committee will hold a uh, legislative oversight hearing on Thursday, November 21st, 2019, beginning at 10 a.m. here in Council Chambers. Agency representatives will come before the committee to give an update on the status of zero waste planning effort, and the Department of Public Works will discuss their less waste plan. And the Health Committee uh, held a hearing on September 5th, 2019 for Council Bill 19-0410, the Baltimore City Trauma Responsive Care Act. The hearing will reconvene uh, by holding a work session on Tuesday, November 19th, 2019, beginning at 10 a.m. here in Council Chambers. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilman Bullock. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Housing Urban Affairs Committee will be having a hearing on Tuesday, November 12th at 3.40 p.m. to hear City Council Bill 19-0158-R, approval for the exchange of a Class BD7 license to a Class A7 license for 1503 to 05 Light Street. Thank you. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilman Reisinger. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Land Use Committee will hold a hearing on Bill 19-0423 on Wednesday, January the 15th, 2020 at 1 p.m. in the Council Chambers. This is zoning. It's a conditional use parking lot, a portion of 2700 Madison Avenue, known as 3002 East Drive. Thank you, Mr. President. Chair recognizes Councilman Cohen. Uh, uh, Reannouncement of the Education Youth Committee hearing on our local share commitment to Kerwin. This is your resolution, Mr. President, on December 3rd, uh, 530 in the City Hall Chambers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chair recognizes Councilman Dorsey. Thank you. Um, it's uncustomary, but I just wanted to give acknowledgement to the MTA and to the Department of Transportation for their participation uh, in a really wonderful hearing last week on the relationship between DOT and MTA um, in, I would say, an unprecedented, unprecedented fashion. The two agencies, city and state, collaborated in preparing their presentation to the committee. Um, it was a great presentation, um, and I think it really signifies the uh, moment we have here where I think we have uh, a better opportunity to improve transportation in this city uh, right now than we have had in a very long time with really strong leadership uh, directing both DOT and MTA and I just want to give my thanks to them and to our committee staff and committee members and everybody who was part of that hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, regular announcements. Uh, before we Move any further, I would like to welcome our new city council pages, Shoshana Rogers and Lucy Hubbard. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> I would also like to congratulate our new Senate president, Senator Bill Ferguson, someone that we're all very familiar with. We know that Senator Ferguson is a tireless advocate for Baltimore, but more importantly, he's a tireless advocate for education throughout Maryland. Has a, the experience of being a teacher and working in a classroom, and we now know that we have a Senate president that will, one, uh, stand up for what's right, and we know that passing Kerwin and making sure that the Kerwin funding and changes are made will be a top priority for him, and that now Baltimore will be a priority for the Senate president. So congratulations to Senator Ferguson again. Uh, we also had two birthdays on the council recently. Uh, first, we'd like to wish Councilman Pinkett a happy birthday. His birthday was on October the 21st. Happy birthday, Councilman Pinkett. And second, uh, just this past weekend, Councilwoman McRae's birthday was on October the 26th. Happy birthday, Councilwoman. Uh, before I move any, any, yep, uh, for one second, without objection, let the record reflect that Chair, Chair Middleton moved all amendments on the member's desk for City Council Bill 18-0307, Water Accountability and Equity Act. The record now reflects, thank you. Uh, Madam Vice President, uh, can we please add a moment of silence for Mayor uh, Tom and D'Alessandro, Congressman Elijah Cummings, Congressman John Conyers, DPW spokesman Jeffrey Raymond, and Michael Lyles, who's the brother of Jackie Addison, who works in my office, in addition to the 280 victims of homicide. Uh, regular announcements for anyone else. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Clark. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President, and thanks for asking for those moments of silence. I'd like to speak for just a moment. Um, of the message that was sent from the Department of Public Works about the, the sudden, unexpected, tragic death of Jeffrey Raymond, um, if I may just read what they wrote. Uh, DPW is mourning, and I might add, the entire city of Baltimore, uh, the passing of their beloved co-worker, Jeffrey Raymond, who passed away suddenly on Sunday, October 27th, yesterday, Mr. Raymond headed the department's of office, uh, excuse me, Office of Communications, which included all media matters. 
His um, expertise as a former news reporter and editor provided the media and residents with accurate and timely information on a range of technical and timely topics. He frequently was the face and voice of public works in radio, television, print, and social media, and attended so many community meetings and events. His professionalism and finely honed sense of humor will be greatly missed. Um, the department is in mourning, for sure, and the city as well. Thank you um, for your prayers. Uh, oh, let me add one thing, if I may. Um, the, the arrangements are as follow. Um, Wednesday, October 30th, this week, um, at 11.30 a.m. at Saul Levinson and Brothers, Levinson Chapel, 8900 Ricerstown Road at Mount Liz Wilson Lane in Pikesville will be the uh, ser final services for Mr. Raymond. Thank you. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilman Costello. Thank you, Mr. President. I had two things. Uh, one, I wanted to take a moment to uh, echo your sentiments regarding Senator Ferguson. Uh, Senator Ferguson is a, a dear friend of mine and happens to be my home state senator. I'm proud to live in the 46th district. I could not think of a harder working, more intelligent, empathetic, thoughtful, and capable leader uh, to be heading up the upper chamber, upper chamber in Annapolis uh, and what that means for Baltimore City. So congratulations to State Senator Bill Ferguson. Uh, I also want to take a moment to recognize Justin Lane. If you could stand, please. Um, many of you may have received an invite for Justin's retirement party coming up this Friday. Uh, he's retiring at the tender age of 20. Uh, Justin has worked uh, in the 11th District Office, both for me and prior to that with former Councilman Bill Cole, uh, for over six years now. Uh, and he is, um, at least for me, one of the core reasons for my success. Uh, he has been a staple in that office, providing constituent services to thousands of residents throughout the 11th District. Uh, Justin is going to be retiring, and then he's heading over to Baltimore Development Corporation, where he's going to be an economic development officer in health and biotech. Uh, I am incredibly proud of him. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the great things he's going to accomplish there. Uh, but most importantly, I'm, I'm very thankful that we have a bright young guy like this who, despite leaving my office, is going to be staying with city government. Our future is very bright when we have young leaders like this. So, Justin, thank you for everything you've done. And to everyone uh, who got the email, I hope you can join us at his retirement party. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Chair recognizes Councilman Dorsey. Uh, Madam Vice President. I'm going to choke you with this uh, cable bill. Uh, I got married, and I just, I think that's great, and I just want to tell you all that. And uh, if my wife is uh, ever watching Charm TV, I'll just say uh, thanks for being willing. Um, I, uh, for the second year, uh, I just want to report, uh, Last year, uh, my office created an arts grant program uh, for uh, artists in the Third City Council District where we give away uh, four $3,000 grants to artists who live in the Third City Council District. Uh, thank you to Councilman Sc Council President Scott um, and to uh, folks like Doreen Bolger who were very generous in their um, donations to make uh, this year's uh, grants possible uh, with their tax deductible contributions through the Baltimore City Foundation. I just want to uh, give a shout out to the Baltimore City Foundation for being an excellent fiscal sponsor for programs like this and throughout city government. Um, we had the kind of report out event this weekend. Uh, it was a great uh, occasion to celebrate the arts uh, and the the what simply having funding makes possible for people not just to be artists, but to be artists who live and sur struggle a little bit less to put a roof over their head and food on the table. Um, and that's what Artist District is all about. Uh, I want to give recognition to uh, Dr. K, 
uh, K. Wise Whitehead for being an amazing, amazing third district residence, uh, resident and a presence in our lives, a uh, voice for the people here across Baltimore City and um, congratulate her on being recognized as Essence Magazine's 100 Woke Women. And I want to remind everybody that the Baltimore Book Festival and City Lights are coming up uh, November 1st through 3rd. So that's coming up before our next City Council meeting. And I want to encourage everybody to get out there and celebrate and participate in the arts. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Thank you. Chair recognizes Council Vice President Middleton. Thank you. And I guess before we close, uh, just a uh, remembrance to, uh, as we're ending on, um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, October. Um, just a reminder to for women to continue to get your mammogram screenings and also for men for your prostate screenings and also everyone for colon cancer screenings. The next meeting of the City Council will be held on the, the evening of Monday, November 4th, 2019 at 5 p.m. We will have a moment of silence for Mayor Tommy D'Alessandro, uh, Congressman Elijah E. Cummings, Congressman John Connors, which was also the founder of the Legislative uh, Black Caucus. Uh, also a moment of silence for uh, DPW spokesman Jeffrey Raymond, and also Jackie Addison's brother, Michael Lyles and also Shelley Zimmerman's grandmother, Helen Lund. Thank you. There being no further business, this concludes the 69th meeting of the 72nd term of the Baltimore City Council. Thank you.